Brother Board will give us a short challenge. We will be having our annual business meeting and uh, hear what all God is doing. And it is amazing. It really is. It's fun to watch God bless and to be a part of what uh, his design is for a local church, to be a part of a church that's doing it right and uh, experiencing the blessing of God in marvelous ways and uh, appreciate each of your participation in that. Kevin gave to us, as I've asked Kevin to oversee and administrate the activities and things, uh, Pastor Josh will be doing a lot of the youth uh, work as well as uh, some of the youth staff will be working and they'll be having teen wars this week. It's like a teenage VBS and so every night this week they will have a teen meeting here. You be in prayer for that, an opportunity for our teenagers to invite uh, some people to come and uh, our prayer is that teenagers will be saved, teenagers will be strengthened and uh, that teenagers will be introduced to our church and ministry and uh, that our youth group will grow because of the teen wars. And so it won't happen unless you're praying about it. And uh, remember, putting on the whole armor of God is praying all the time. We're going to have plenty of things to pray about. And we have a number of folks going through deep water uh, that we can pray for, pray specifically for Mike Malam uh, as he continues to battle uh, the recovery of the stem cell uh, transplant that uh, is not going very well and um, and then uh, they found some spots on his lungs that uh, they're very concerned about as to what it could be and um, and so we're just praying that the Lord will direct and give grace and healing according to his will but we want to make sure that we're doing our part in praying and encouraging him and Amy and the girls doing our part as a church to stand beside them and to help them and so lots to be praying about this week and um, opportunities up and coming. And so I trust that you'll be faithful in all of that. That's bow our heads and then we'll sing a couple of songs and then uh, we'll have Brother Board come and, and uh, speak to us. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for its power. Thank you for its wisdom, its direction in our lives. We do believe that it is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It reveals where we are and what's going on and how we should respond to it. It directs us into the next steps we're to take. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to live every day dependent upon your word. May we allow it to not only uh, be a source of uh, direction, but Lord, may we see it as the ultimate authority, really the only authority in our lives to Tell us what is true about you and what is necessary in our lives and how we can be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. I pray that we would not just read it and meditate upon it, but that we would memorize it, that we would love it. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that we would allow uh, the Spirit of God to take it and, and mold it into our minds that we may be saturated by it. I pray that you would bless our church family, pray for those going through difficult times. I pray that you would uh, minister in a special way to their hearts and meet their needs in a special way according to your will. I pray that you'd use us to encourage one another and to pray for one another, to make our requests known. We do pray that you be with Dr. Marriott. We're so thankful for his testimony. We pray that you would minister uh, to his physical needs. I pray that uh, the cancer would be completely eradicated out of his body. I pray that you'd give to him uh, wisdom in the healing process and patience for it to be complete. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would uh, help him with the details of getting another school year started and having uh, this uh, trial in his life in the midst of it. I pray that you'd give him wisdom for decisions he needs to make. We thank you for bringing Brother Board to us tonight, and we do thank you for uh, his ministry for Maranatha and how you've blessed his work and used him mightily for your glory and the enhancement of the school. And I pray that you would use him in our midst tonight to not only encourage us regarding Maranatha and uh, Christian education, but Lord, may you use him even as he gives a challenge from your word. I pray, God, that you would... Uh, allow us tonight as a church to celebrate you, to celebrate your grace and your mercy in our lives and our church. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for the privilege to participate in your program. 
We're thankful that we get to link arms with one another as a body and to minister to our Jerusalem and even to the uttermost part of the world. We thank you for how you're using us, and we're humbled by your grace. And so, Lord, I pray that you'd meet with us as we celebrate all that you've done in our ministry and will do. And I pray that you be glorified in it, for we do pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand together, page 580. I love thy kingdom, Lord, the house of thine abode, the church our blessed redeemed, saved with his own precious blood. I love thy church, O God, her walls before thy stand, dear as the apple. Of thine eye and graven on thy hand. For her my tears shall fall, for her my praise ascend. To her my cares and toils be given, till toils and cares shall end. We'll sing verse 4 is the last verse. Beyond my highest joy, I prize her heavenly ways. Her sweet communion, solemn vows, her hymns of love and praise. And then over to 579. God has built his church on one foundation, Jesus Christ, the living cornerstone, crucified and risen to redeem us. We adore and worship him alone. We are your church, your bride, the people of your strength we live and worship unashamed for your cause we serve we joyfully proclaim we are your people we are your church set apart to serve our loving savior given power to share redemption's plan we will tell the world of love of Jesus. We will preach the cross to every land. We are your church, your bride, the people of your name. We will think we live. We worship unashamed for your cause we serve. Joyfully proclaim we are your people, we are your church. With a shout, the bridegroom is returning. Heaven's prince will come to claim his own. We will rise to reign with him forever. We will sing our praise around his throne. We are your church, your bride, the people of your name. In his strength we live. We worship unashamed for your cause. We serve, we joyfully proclaim we are your people. We are your church. Thank you. Amen. You may be seated. All right. I am thankful. Uh, we, have, we belong to an organization in our Christian school called the Michigan Association of Christian Schools. And tomorrow is a very important day in the lives of 
those of us that uh, love Michigan Association of Christian Schools, for tomorrow is their annual golf fundraiser that being led of the spirit, I will go play in with some of the staff. And um, I am thankful for uh, the opportunity to be a part of a good organization. Some people ask me, why would you be a part of the Michigan Association of Christian Schools? And there's a lot of wonderful reasons why you do and how you work together and, and all of that. But there is one main reason. How many of you remember back in the 70s where the state tried to require licensing of teachers in order to teach in a Christian school, and we all went to Lansing? How many of you remember that? I was, I think, in 11th grade, maybe 10th grade, and I remember we took our whole high school, and uh, the entire Lansing grounds were, were, I had people. Well, let me tell you, if the government ever tries to shut down our school, you will be glad that we were a part of the Michigan Association of Christian Schools. And uh, there is a unity, there is a strength. And so uh, tomorrow is their fundraiser. Brother Board has come up to uh, represent Maranatha Baptist University that we highly uh, recommend. We're thankful for this college. We're thankful for its great stand. We're thankful for how God has used it in my life and many, many others just like me down through the years where we got a solid training about the Word of God and the, and the ministry of God, but also an understanding of the character of God and what it is to represent Him well. And uh, Brother Board, he does the promoting of it, and he raises funds for it and helps people understand uh, the opportunity to invest in something that's going to outlive you. And so, Brother Board, once you come, share with us what the Lord has on your heart. All right, he took all my thunder. He's going he's gonna to play tomorrow, but he hasn't got a chance of winning. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6 is where I'm going to be. Maranatha started in 1968. Our purpose is to develop leaders for ministry in the local church and the world to the praise of his glory. Let me ask you the question this way. How will you worship this Tuesday? That is, that is the challenge that we give our students. That's why we say that they're to minister in the local church, they're to be part of a local church, but they can also minister in the world, which is to say they can be scientists, they can be nurses, they can be business people, they can be all kinds of different things. And so we're up to about 40 degree programs now, about 35 minors that students can take. We continue to grow. We continue to ask the Lord for direction that way. And we do covet your prayers. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute, all right? The other thing I would tell you is that we challenge our students with a simple motto. We tell them to go, serve, lead. I thought, actually thought about just talking about that tonight. But let me just challenge you with this. We tell them that they should go with purpose. God has created all of us for a purpose. You are all unique. All you have to do is look around the room. Your talents are unique. And God has created you for a purpose. That number one purpose is to glorify him. So I would challenge you that we need to go, not just our students, but you as well, with purpose. We challenge them to serve with compassion. Shortest verse in your Bible is what? Jesus wept. Do you know why he wept that day? Look at John 11. It's the raising of Lazarus. Jesus wept because he saw the control of sin over his people. Yes, he grieved over the death of his friend, but he knew what he was going to do. And he saw how sin was controlling them. And the Bible says he literally groaned in his spirit. Jesus had great compassion on people. We challenge our students that they too should have compassion and that they should lead with integrity. And that's that's a tremendous challenge for all of us today, to lead with great integrity in all we do. So if you will, if you're interested, please come back to the table. I'll share more information with you. The only piece of literature I'll challenge you with is there's a card on the back of the table that says, let's talk about you. Now, usually I use this for students, right? 
But if you have any interest in the university, if you'd like to get our magazine mailed to you, if you'd like to get other literature mailed to you, if you'd like to get on a, a newsletter program, Dr. Marriott says something out every month. If you'd like to get on that newsletter, fill out the card, give us your email address, make sure you write on there, I'm not a student, and I'll make sure it gets to the right people, okay? If you do have a young person that might be interested in the university, please have them fill one of these out as well, and you can keep the pen on the table. The more literature you take, the less I have to take back with me. Now, I have to be very careful about this next piece. Dr. Marriott, I was a board member for the university from 2001 to 2011. For those of you who know Dr. Marriott as your pastor in this church, may I ask your forgiveness. I was one of the people who hired him <laughs> to be the president of the university. He then got me back. He hired me into the university. <laughs> so he's now my boss. What I would apologize for is I know him as Marty. So if I use that term tonight, I, I don't mean it offensively at all. He is a dear friend of mine. And, and I love him greatly. We have talked several times over the last couple of weeks, and uh, he has great confidence in his God. When I talked to him today, he shared three things with me. So if you'd like to pray specifically for him, he has three events coming up this month, the month of August. Number one is he will meet with his oncologist. The report after the surgery was the entire tumor is gone. Now, he woke up June 24th, his birthday, and he was having trouble seeing. And they said, you have a detached retina. And as soon as they did the examination, they said, we think it's more than that. They called in a specialist. And he's praising the Lord because the best specialist in the world for what Dr. Marriott had is in Wisconsin. He's in Madison, Wisconsin. So they think they got the entire tumor, but he will be talking to the oncologist. Don't quote me on the dates. I think he said it was August 9th, but it was kind of fuzzy. We had a, we had a fun talk today. He's on Percocet. If you, really want to know, if you really want to know what he thinks about you, go visit him, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, my wife and I will go do that this week. It should be interesting. Uh, second uh, appointment he has is with the surgeon who did the work, and he'll be pulling his, the stitches from his eye, and as Pastor mentioned, he looks kind of awkward. The third thing, and we've been having fun with this, and so please forgive us, we wondered if Dr. Marriott wanted to be Ron Hamilton or Dick Vitale, <laughs> right? You understand where I'm going? Yeah, so his third appointment in August is with a doctor and the prosthetic. I didn't know they called it that but he will be getting a, a false eye to replace the one that's been removed. So if you're praying for him, those are the three specific events that will occur this month in his life. Now, he's planning on staying away as much as he can for four to six weeks. So I'm not sure if he'll be on campus the first day of class, which is Labor Day, which is unbelievable, but yes, we are first day of class. While you guys are walking the Mackinac Bridge, <laughs> we're, having, we're having classes, right? Um, and I'm not sure if he'll be there. August the 22nd is the day scheduled for him to give the president's message to the faculty and staff. As of right now, he's planning on giving that. And we'll see how the Lord guides over the next couple of weeks. So would you please pray for him? Right? Now let me very quickly talk to you about prayer. Isaiah 59, and I have to start here. Isaiah 59.1 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, neither is ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his, hid his face from you. And this is always important to me, that he will not hear. Folks, we can talk about prayer all, that, all we want. Unless we know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, the Lord says, I will not hear. We are regarding iniquity in our hearts. So can I challenge you with that thought before we begin tonight? That you need to know the Savior for the Savior to hear what it is that you're praying about. And I love the fact that we like to pray for other people. 
It's the right thing to do. And we have our list of things that we pray for. But can I challenge you, perhaps this week, study Paul's prayer life. The Apostle Paul never prayed for health. The Apostle Paul never prayed to be freed from prison. He never prayed for somebody's job. He never prayed for somebody's home to be sold. That doesn't mean it's wrong for us to do that. But as you study his prayer life, his focus for all of the people that he knew was their spiritual walk. Even when he prayed for their health. Listen to what he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though the outward man perish, yet the inner man is strengthened day by day. My prayer for Dr. Marriott, yep, we want the Lord to heal him. Yep, we want him back at work. Yes, we want him to be encouraged, but we want him most of all to be strengthened spiritually even through this event in his life. And can I challenge you, that's how we ought to be praying for one another. The greatest problems that you and I have, now listen carefully, the greatest problem that you and I will have are always, always spiritual. Our greatest prayer concern and concentration, whether for ourselves or for others, should be for spiritual protection, for strength, and for healing. Turn in your Bibles, Ephesians chapter 6. The passage that we're going to study starts in verse 19, and it's got an interesting phrase. Paul says, and for me. Now think about who Paul was. And Paul is telling these people, he just finished the warrior's outfit, if you will. And he finishes in verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And he tells us we ought to be praying. And I don't have time tonight. I'm going to try to be quick. I always hate that when a preacher says that. But I'm going to try to be quick, right? But understand what he's saying. He's telling us all about our prayer lives what our prayer lives should be about, who they should be for, what they should be, how often we should be doing it. You ought to study verse 18. But he gets to verse 19 and he says, and for me. And I'm sitting here thinking about one of the greatest prayer warriors of all time, the greatest missionary, a church planter. And he tells us, here's how I would have you pray for me. Now that causes me to, to be attentive to think about what he's saying. And let's read that, verse 19, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. Tychius, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things. Can I just give you six things that I would challenge you to pray for one another about? Can I do that? Verse 19, the first part of the verse. Paul says that I might have utterance. Can I challenge you to pray for one another that you would have wisdom? And how do you get wisdom? You study the scriptures. Pray for one another that you will be regularly in scriptures, that you will gain wisdom while you're in the scriptures so that you can have utterance. The second part of that verse, and I'll go quickly, he said that I might open my mouth boldly. Boldness. How many times a week do you get the opportunity to share your testimony with others? How bold are you in doing that? 
Can you pray for one another that you will have boldness in your witness? That's what Paul was asking for. That we would have the ability to speak with love, with no hesitation, and with firm convictions. So we, that we ought to, we'd have utterance, that we'd have boldness. And then he says in verse 20, that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. In Colossians, he says that I may make it manifest as I ought or should to speak. And that's to say that we're to speak with clear direction. We're going to be decisive, that there's no addition to God's truth when we speak. And folks, that's a tremendous challenge for all of us, is it not? We don't need to add anything to Scripture. We don't need to subtract anything from Scripture. We need to speak the truth in love. We need to proclaim it clearly. And I would challenge you, it's very easy for us to get red-faced with people. But the Bible wants us to convey God's truth with his love and share it that way. The fourth thing he says in verse 21 I find fascinating. He wants all those people to know what's going on in his life. We often say that the pastor lives in a glass house. But what Paul is saying is that I might be transparent. And that's a word that's thrown around a lot today. Transparency. And I wonder though, are you transparent? Is what people see really who you are. I spent about 35 years in the business world. Most of my time was in sales. I can sell ice to the Eskimos, <laughs> right? But is what you are who people see? And is that transparency enough that it draws people to want to know what's going on? Why are you the way that you are? I would challenge you today. Paul said, I want to be transparent. I want people to see who I really am. I would challenge you today. That ought to be your prayer as well. Let me leave Ephesians for just a minute. You don't have to flip there. Jeremiah 1.8. Pastor Corson was our pastor in Clarkston. And he always prayed that he would not have a fear of the face of the people. Jeremiah 1.8. I've always been fascinated by that thought. You know, it's the idea that regardless of what those other folks are doing, I'm going to have a willingness to tell the truth. We had a pastoral candidate at our church in Georgia come, and he had, a, he had something that he was very convicted about that he would do. He knew it wasn't real popular. It's wearing headdresses, and I don't know how you all folks feel about it. I don't see a lot of headdresses, but whatever, right, 1 Corinthians 11. I have a problem with his conviction. I don't have that conviction. I admitted it to him. And we had a great talk about it. He then said he would not preach it in church. I had a tremendous problem about that. That's having a fear of the face of the people. And we can't have that. We ought not to have that. We ought to be able to talk to whoever. Pastor mentioned about the problem in the 70s. I got news for you folks. The, the world is at war with the church today. I don't care, I do not care which of our parties is in charge. It doesn't matter. The world is at war with Christianity, true Christianity. And that is not going to change shy of the Lord's return. So we will have those battles to come, and we need to be able to speak without a fear of the face of the people. Let me challenge you with one last thought. When you pray for one another, Job is an interesting study, obviously. Job 1.10, Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? I would challenge you to pray for one another that God would put a hedge about this church, each of these families. I'm in the business of training youth. I know what happens when a child goes a different direction than what mom and dad would like. Can I challenge you when you pray for the families of this church that you pray for the decisions that the young people will make? Amen. That they will be godly decisions? 
that they will be faithful. It's, it's unbelievable what we see with families when children make decisions contrary to scripture. So when you're praying for God to put that hedge about that family, pray about their decision making as well. But folks, there's a whole lot more I could say about those six points. I, I would challenge you to study that passage. Paul says that I might have utterance, that I might have boldness, that I might speak as I ought to speak. Paul prays for transparency. And then I would add those two things, that we not have a fear of the face of the people and that God would put a hedge about our families. I, I would encourage you, it's, it's good for you to pray for health. It's good for you to pray for sales of houses and for jobs and for other issues. But it's far, far, far more important for us to pray for the spiritual lives of one another. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. You are so good to us. Thank you, Father, for your encouragement to us from your word, even, Father, for your conviction from your word. Father, we love these folks. We love their faithfulness in being here tonight. Father, we pray that this might be an encouragement to them as they think about one another during the week that they might pray not just for, for the physical aspects of their lives, for the needs that they might have, but Father, they might also focus on their spiritual walk. Help us, Father, to understand that our problems, the critical problems of our lives are spiritual issues. Help us, Father, to pray for one another accordingly. And we'll praise you for that in Christ's name. Amen. Pastor? Brother Borge, you don't know, but our people do. I preached this morning Ephesians 6, 18. And you just picked right up. And the Lord can do that anytime he wants, but I think he's reminding us as a church about the necessity of prayer and uh, how we put on the whole armor of God through prayer and how we pray for one another specifically in their spiritual needs. And I think what God is reminding us, we all need to be praying and we need to be praying a lot more than we do and uh, casting that dependence upon him. And so we're thankful for that great challenge. All right, if you take your hymn books and turn to page 576. Oh, no, 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 we're not singing that verse. What song? 581, let's all stand together. Five hundred eighty one. <clears throat> Christ has made the sure foundation, Christ the head and cornerstone, chosen of the Lord and precious. Binding all the church in one. Holy Zion's help forever and her confidence alone. To this temple where we call thee, come, O Lord of hosts, bring thee with the accustomed love. In kindness, hear thy people as they pray, and thy fullest benediction shed within its walls alway. Here, vouchsafe to all thy servants what they ask of thee to gain. What they gain from thee forever with a blessed to retain. And hereafter in thy glory evermore with thee to reign. Thank you. Excellent singing. Amen. You may be seated at this time. Our Ushers are coming for our evening ties and love offerings, faith promise giving, school uh, giving, and building fund giving. Just basically taking 
what God has entrusted to you, saying, God, I want to be a wise, obedient steward with that which is yours, and simply give the way God commands us to give. May we be found faithful. Jerry, will you pray and ask God's blessing on the offering, please? Dear God, we thank you for another time when we can give to the work here. Uh, as we take tonight to review for how you have blessed, Father, we here at Faith have experienced firsthand how you have provided individually and for us as a church. I pray for this next year that you would direct uh, how each penny and dollar is spent to bring honor and glory to you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Me. She's watching by live stream. She's in Indiana with Gretchen helping to uh, pack up uh, Randy's uh, parents as they will be selling their house. And so Michelle is there and she said, how old are you? You were not in high school in the 70s. <laughs> so it must have been the 80s. And so anyway, it was the 80s when all that took place. I'm glad I have my accountability around, right? And, uh, but anyway, uh, most of you remember that ordeal, even if I can't remember when it all happened. And, uh, but I do remember what happened yesterday, and so some of you may be squinting. If you do need to put your sunglasses on, go ahead, because over here on this side is a bit of a glare that's coming off of my future daughter-in-law's finger. And uh, Andrew and Bethany are now officially engaged. And uh, as of last night, and uh, we rejoice with them and God's leadership in their lives, and I uh, trust that you will pray for them. All right, I'll call Faith Baptist Church to order, and uh, do want to say that I am thankful for an amazing, 
uh, eight years almost that the Lord has given me the privilege to be the pastor of this church, but to be able to more than anything see the fruit that has been born by His grace and for His glory. And what a joy it is to be able to witness, uh, even this last year, uh, the incredible working of God, not only numerically and financially, those will tend to be on display to some extent, but I'm thankful for the amazing growth spiritually. And I wish all of you could enjoy what I enjoy Sunday night and all day Monday as folks text me about how God used the message and the preaching.